All right. Good evening, everybody. Happy Tuesday. Great to see your faces. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. It is Personal Development Week, and this week we are choosing to focus on and talk about the Enneagram, which to some of you, you're like, I have no idea what you're talking about. Some of you um, maybe learned about it last week when we said, okay, before Tuesday's call, we want you to take this test, narrow down the numbers that your personality type is, and come to the call to learn about what it means. And then there's some of you that are like, nope, I know my number. I am such a solid that number. And I've known what my Enneagram number is. And I also now know what my friend's numbers are and my family's numbers are. Are. And so we're going to have, pe we're going to have consultants. So we're going to have people on all ends of the spectrum. And this call is for everybody. So I'm excited to welcome and introduce two of our Enneagram guest speakers tonight, our fantastic um, Anna Hughes and Christina Steenbrook. They both to me introduced, they were probably my biggest pushers um, in the any into the Enneagram world, Tammy's laughing because she too has been pushed um, by one or more of them uh, into the Enneagram world and understanding what the heck this means. I think, correct me if I'm wrong, you guys, Christina, Anna, correct me if I'm wrong, but social media has actually really helped the Enneagram um, personality stuff kind of gain traction because, you know, back in the day, we didn't have social media when everybody was taking the Myers-Briggs personality tests. And uh, that was more something that you did in school. And uh, when you were trying to pick your career. And now Enneagram is kind of like the more updated I don't want to call it too, it's it's kind of a trendier version though. It's kind of cool to be like, ooh, I'm this number. Um, but it's actually very empowering, insightful, and can really, really have an impact on um, how you interact with others and how you understand the people around you when you become comfortable understanding the different personality types that make up the Enneagram. And so that is what we are going to talk about tonight. So, uh, Quick show of hands, how many, and of course, we're only going to see the, the the first screen. Now, I'll flip through the, the screens, but quick show of hands for those of you with your camera on. How many of you are brand new to the Enneagram, like no idea really much about what we're talking about? Okay, good show of hands there. How many of you took the test? You have kind of a general idea because it gave you percentages and you're like, okay, well, it kind of narrowed me down to three numbers, but I don't know what the three numbers mean. How many of you kind of fall in that category? Okay. And then how many of you know your number and you are like, oh, I, I know what my number is. I know about the Enneagram. I can relate. And so, okay. So proof in the pudding to Christina and Anna that as promised, we would have consultants that are brand new and consultants that are like, no, I know my number and I'm a walking this. So um, with that being said, first thing I'm going to ask both of you, and you guys are going to, you're probably going to get mad at me because I'm going to spotlight both of you if I can. Hold on. If I can. I'm going to spotlight both of you. You're so pretty, Emma. Okay. What I'm going to spotlight both of you. Maybe I should spotlight myself too, since I'm going to be asking you a couple of questions. Okay. Yeah. All right. Perfect. So, we, seen this before. Say, hi, everybody. <laughs> hi, everybody. Welcome to tonight's call. Um, <laughs> okay. My, here's my first question just to kind of get us into talking about Enneagram. How did both of you come upon like Enneagram and the moment you like, were like, okay, I'm going to take interest in this. Um, yep. I saw a friend posting about it a whole lot and, um, I just never had heard of it before, but she just kept posting all these, um, things about herself and, um, and it all started with you're a two if, and I was like, what is it? What is she talking about? And so I messaged her asking what she was talking about. And, uh, so she spilled it all over me and I was like, okay. Um, and then I can't leave well enough alone. So if you introduce me to something new, I'm going to become an expert in it because I don't know how to stop myself. And so I went on a journey to figure out what I was because, um, she was trying to tell me what she thought I was. And I don't like being told what to do. And I also don't like people knowing me very well. And so I was determined to make sure she wasn't correct. And so I had to go dig in and figure out what things were, um, 
by myself and learn it that way. And then I just was obsessed with it for a very long season of my life. Perfect. Thank you, Anna. Um, I attended a retreat by my upline in 2018, in September of 2018, and we were gifted this book called oh, The Road. That to one. Yeah, I know. And the best way to figure it out. Yeah, we sat around and we were like reading this all together. And I was just so certain I knew who I was, but I read the entire book on my flight home from Oklahoma. Like that's how into it I really, really was. Um, and the fun thing is the whole part of self-discovery is is really interesting because turns out I didn't know myself as well as I thought I did. And so uh, this has just been something that has really uh, helped me kind of come into myself. And, and so I really, really love all the things Enneagram. And so I'm kind of like, I mean, like, oh my gosh, I'm obsessed I'm like all. Yeah. A little bit obsessed with it. So uh, yeah. So I've been uh, into this for about uh, five and a half years. It's crazy. I love it. it yeah. crazy. I've, always, I've always struggled with identity. And so yeah. it's one of the first like personality tests that helped me actually pinpoint pieces of myself that I've never been able to nail down before. So it was totally. really healing, encouraging for me, for sure. Yeah. So then what would you both say? And this is the, this is only my, my, my I'm not going to drill you with questions the whole time because I'm going to give you the opportunity to just speak freely about Enneagram and help our, our people kind of figure <laughs> out who they are, what they are and, and, and inspire them to, to learn more. Um, but how would you say that then knowing your personality type has helped you? and the impact that it can have when you start understanding the personality types of those around you. You want to start? I got sure. Um, for me, he's really close by. He's going to get over it. I'll apologize later. But um, Enneagram came into my life at a very troubling time in just my household. And um, I once I figured out kind of what made me tick, first of all, I was able to call it out quicker and stop myself. And like, it helped me figure out what my triggers were in like relationships and all of those things. And um, while that was difficult to process and actually going, hey, which parts of this is me doing this and what parts of this is not me? Um, I also learned that my husband is the same Enneagram number as me, which was infuriating because we have the same uh, buttons to push. Um, mm -hmm. And so it was creating so much of an issue because we were doing the same things to each other and like neither of us wanted to back down. But I think processing a lot of how I dealt with fear and motivation and just like, all of these things that um, affected all of the relationships in my life, it helped me back down more in ways that were just healthier instead of kind of being super stubborn and chaotic. And I don't know, I think understanding the way that my brain worked um, helped me, uh, what's the word, um, take control of my brain more and in ways that I had not been able to before because I just didn't understand why I was reacting the way I was or like, well, I'd be super, super even keeled, which most people who know me and ever around me, like it's, I'm just, this is my, I'm either this and like extremely happy or I'm just like, whatever, like I'm chill. Like nothing bothers me. You can't get a rise out of me until you get a rise out of me. And then I see red and I black out and I'm screaming and I'm like, that does not make sense to me. Um, and so learning a lot about myself through Enneagram helped me figure out where that anger came from and what was going on in my brain when those things would happen. And it was like, so healing because I thought I was just broken. Like I thought there was just something just fundamentally wrong with how my brain worked and nobody was ever going to be able to figure me out because I can't figure me out. So how could I expect anyone in my life to understand me or to accept me if I couldn't? And so being able to pinpoint my personality and like what things triggered me and what things motivated me and what some of my deepest fears were that I didn't even know until somebody else put them in words. And I was like, oh my gosh, you're right. Because then in relationships with others, I was able to be vulnerable in those areas because I knew how to word them and I knew how to describe them. And I knew 
more about how to relate those also to others and then learning their numbers. Like some of my best friends learning their numbers. I'm like, that is why you drive me insane. I get it now. <laughs> and that's why I drive you insane, even though I'm not trying to do anything to you. I'm just existing and you can't stand it. And just like learning some of those things. Um, and then being gentle with each other in those areas and like being able to make room for those pieces of their personality that are in direct conflict with ours. But once we've named them and we've pointed them out, we're like, oh, that's not that terrifying anymore. And I think I know how to manage this and we can relate better. So and I, I think you tied that together really well. And yeah. I think it then is pertinent for me to ask you before taking Anna's answer, what is your number and give us just a very blanket overview of how that, who that, who that is, like, what um, is it? So I'm a nine, which is the mediator. Um, I'm extremely good at um, conflict resolution with other people, not myself, but I'm extremely good at taking two people who can't seem to like make it work and make it work. And I'm just really good at, um, helping mediate conversations and um, communication breakdowns. Like when I'm like, you guys just aren't, you know, I can tell why you're fighting. And so like uh, bringing people together, tying bows on packages of relationships um, and helping create community. And that's just a gift I've always had. Um, but I could never put myself into the community. Like I was always like out here, like tying ties together and bringing people together, but never really like putting myself in there. Um, and I'm really, really passive. Um, and that comes from just kind of a fear of rejection and being alone and isolation. So I'd be too afraid to say something um, that would make you not like me or uh, that would ever cut me off from a person that I valued or loved or wanted to be around or looked up to. I could never, ever make that person mad in any way. And so it's easier to keep my mouth shut than to ever let anyone know who I am because I'm afraid if I like open up and like, show you who I am, then you won't like me and you'll reject me. And I can't process that. And so that was learning a lot of uh, that. And that came from my childhood too, is like, I had a, you know, I had a brother that was um, extremely difficult and my parents gave him a hundred percent of the attention. And I never, ever wanted to burden them with a problem because they already had a big problem. So I never wanted to be anyone's problem. And so I would just take care of myself and I would, I was super independent um, didn't need anybody, didn't want to hurt anybody's feelings, didn't want to bother anybody with my problems, didn't want to be a burden, any of that. Um, and just, I didn't realize that was a problem until I learned my number. And I was like, oh, this is a fatal flaw of mine, actually. And I thought it was like the crowning glory of my personality. And it was actually like my fatal flaw. It was like the one reason that like my whole life, I was like, why can't I form close friendships? Like, why can't I, you know, X, Y, Z, why can't I relate to others? And it was like the one thing that I thought was the best thing about me was the thing that was actually like crippling me like relationally with others. And so it was like really hard to learn it, but it was also like, wow, I can do something with this now if I'm willing to. Um, so it was just, yeah, so I was a nine and very nine, just very easygoing, very passive, very middle of the road mediate. I can like, that's a gift. And then it's also a curse at the same time. So, but yeah, I don't know if I answered your question. I you just did really. You did. Thank you. Okay. Anna, you. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> well, everything that Christina said, Christina said about all of that is just, it, it, it so echoes true as far as finding, figuring out who you are and why you do all of the things that you do. Um, I can tell you that personally, when I started doing this and I, I really identified with uh, the three because my entire life, my parents really the, everything was based on I if I had good grades that I got a lot of attention as long as I you know was the class president I got a lot of attention and so I was I was identifying as a three because my parents kind of funneled me into these behaviors but that wasn't really who I was and so in in di in discovering the Enneagram and actually like digging into all of these things, all of the feelings that I have set aside my entire life in order to make shit happen, per se, sorry for the language, um, uh, they all came crashing in. And uh, there are a lot of big feelings with fours, because I'm actually a four. 
And so there are emotions all the time. Um, I hate small talk. Uh, I love deep conversation. If you can get into deep conversation with me, I will visit with you for hours. Um, I love that. Uh, I My biggest driver is to feel like I'm significant. Um, feeling insignificant is like a, just a giant fear of like just not mattering. And um, I just I just want to feel uh, seen, really. That's just kind of it. Um, but one I think I really wanted to read for you guys, and I'm going somewhere with this. So so hang with me. This I don't want is, to see me. <laughs> oh my god, this is so funny. So this book is called uh, Millenniagram, and I've there's never heard of that. that. It is the best so book. Okay. Oh my gosh, I need I'm it. I'm gonna read to you guys um, a little bit from Millenniagram, and this is about you know. how to travel. <laughs> Travel. I, love the I was gonna it's do it too. So. Yeah. Okay. So um, I love this because this makes Melissa laugh every time. It's it's this that really kind of got Melissa on board with the whole thing. So um, this is how each person, each type, would behave in an airplane or an airport. Um, so I'm gonna jump straight to seven because you guys all know Melissa. Um, sevens. Uh, getting beers with my new friend I met in line at security. I complimented them on their sweet kicks, and here we are kicking it, being besties. Gonna vacation <laughs> in Cabo together next spring, c- except not because I'll forget. Which is so seven because they're so spontaneous. They're magnanimous. They make friends easily. They're flighty. So like making those big plans of of, of a trip and that's never going to happen. They're very like FOMO people. So they have these really like fun, great ideas that never really come to fruition. Like that is so Melissa in an airport. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, my little sister is a six and sixes have this serious anxiety thing, right? There's a, there's so much to sixes that I absolutely love and adore. Um, some of my closest, favoritest people in the whole wide world are the sixes. Thing is there's um, a difference between clinical anxiety and the six anxiety. Right, and right. And so, yeah, so, <laughs> so you wait, so you, you're going to love this, sixes. Oh my God, okay, we're going to be late. Oh my God, okay, we're going to be early. It's good, it's good. We're all good. I hate flying so much. Like so many things could go wrong with planes, you know? Like I'm careening through space on a chair in the sky. How is that safe? <laughs> <laughs> and that and that describes your sister to a T once oh reading that. God. And then that's your sister because it's just very much like, I have oh, a friend well, who I know oh my gosh, this could happen. Or, oh my gosh, this could happen. Or, oh my gosh. Too. Like, yes. so, totally, totally. okay. So keep so going. Nine. So nines. We'll read Christina's just because this is funny. I have downloaded eight movies and 16 audiobooks so I can smile blandly at my seatmates while not hearing them over my headphones. Yes, I'm wearing my house shoes into this plane right now. I'm about to take a fucking nap. Am I not? <laughs> Mine's definitely like a don't talk to me, please. Just uh-huh. I'm gonna right. just slink into right. my seat and not exist. Okay, this is for you, Roseanne Gephardt. This is the threes. How on point is my airport look? I look fresh, fierce, and professional, don't I? Yes, my bomb <laughs> shoes do match my luggage. Thanks for noticing. You never know when you're gonna meet your next career deciding connection. <laughs> okay. okay. Yours, Anna. So I'm a four. I'm going to get to my gate two hours early so I can look plaintive and languid while people watching over a glass of wine and write poetry about propeller propellers or the journey of life or some shit. <laughs> mm-hmm. So with saying those things. Hold on. Well, you have to, you have to just do the others because there are people on here that are ones, twos, fives okay. and eights this that now feel me. left out. So just go for it. Okay. All right, Robin, Robin Martin, this one's for you. Group A-130, bitches, read them and weep. I've been checked in for a week. Don't ask how. Yes, all my liquids are in a three-ounce bottle purchased for this express purpose. Which number was that one? One. one. Very prepared. Very ready. Okay. Mm -hmm. Twos. Hi, honey. Where's your mom? Oh, my God. You're flying alone? Not anymore, sweetheart. Mommy's here. I mean, she's not, but I am, and we're going to have a great time. Oh, you want to play with your Nintendo DS? That's fine. I get it. I'll just sit here. Twos are the the twos are your the moms. They're the they're the take care of you. They uh they they love to be needed. <laughs> okay. My roommate in college was a two. What a oh. gift. Oh, two I would have not yeah. survived college without her. She oh, God, they just take care of me. It was magic. I still thank her to this day. 
She's on my sensi team. I call her mom. I <laughs> see. Yeah, right. They totally are. All right, fives. Okay, fives. I was just reading up on statistics about airplane deaths before we got here. It's fine. We have a good chance of survival here. Since you're ca- your captive audience, let me tell you all the things about my recent, all-encompassing, very niche area of sur- research. <laughs> um, nines go to five. No, nines go to three, three and six. That's what I thought. And, and six in disintegration. That's yeah. correct. Yeah, which we'll explain in a minute. Yeah. In a minute. Okay, uh, go ahead. Eights scare me, and if you're eight, I love you, but please, like, just don't hurt my feelings. I have lots. A bunch of, of my there. friends are eights, and I don't know why. I'm like, why did I do this to myself? Oh my god, they scare me. Okay, well, I love you because eight eights make incredible leaders. They really, really do. Uh, they just uh, Alyssa, yes, you, yeah, mm-hmm. that's you. I have a wing you eight, know, so you will not control an eight. You will not control an eight, right? Okay. Okay. So an eight is in all caps. It says, all right, listen, people, (laughs) here's the deal. Stay the F together. I'll go buy the sandwiches. Joey, where the F is your passport? God, if you want to get something done, you got to F and do it yourself. (laughs) That is so, um, Melissa, Dawn is an eight. If you've not. Oh yeah. Yeah. (laughs) The eight is eight. You've ever eight. Sure. (laughs) It's so much. So (laughs) Um, with your permission, Melissa, can I use an example of how interpersonally the Enneagram can help you in understanding why people do what they do? Remember I was telling you about the cruise. Can I tell them that story? I don't remember what it was. So it was about me being sick and you not being around. Oh yeah. Go for it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So we just got back from this leadership cruise with Sensi, and I was sick as a dog. Like I could not handle the waves that we were having. And one day I sat in our stateroom and I just was just trying not to hurl. And Melissa had been out of the room for quite a while. I slept until like one o'clock and I woke up and texted her and she says that she would bring me a plate of some bland food. And I'm sitting in the room thinking I'm all alone. Nobody, nobody cares about me because that's what a four would do. Right. (laughs) And so she comes down, she brings me some food and I'm like, I'm eating the food and I'm doing okay. And she's just standing there. She's got her iPad. She's just watching me eat. And I can just tell she needs to get out of this room. Like she is ready to go. And I would have been very brokenhearted over the fact that I don't matter to her. Right. But I also know that because Melissa is a seven, the FOMO is real with her. Like she knows that all the other leaders are on deck 15 and they're sharing some stuff and she's missing out on it right now. And if she stands here, it's like, it doesn't really do anything if she stays, but if she goes, (laughs) she can get something out of it. And so knowing that about her, it was, it was easier for me to release the feelings of I'm not significant. I don't matter. You know, the, the things that I want to do, that I want to create in my head. Um, it was easier to release those things, knowing what I know about her. So do you see how that could be really valuable in any type of relationship, not just your work relationships, but your interpersonal relationships with friendships mm-hmm. and, and your spouses and your, and, and all the people. So it's that's a it's a it's a dead nail example and here's what's even more interesting about it is that when she said it to me she was literally it was like she dove into my brain and was reciting the thoughts I was having when I was standing in the room with my iPad staring at her and in my head weighing out okay like I don't want to be insensitive to the fact that she doesn't feel good but like I'm kind of just standing here looking at her eat bland food and uh, there are people upstairs working and I'm missing it and it was it it truly was and I even told her I was like it was a it was a struggle for me because I I was battling between being insensitive and being where I was pulled and so it was very hard and Anna said to me she was like in I was getting my feelings hurt by it until I remembered your personality type cannot help the fact you're not being insensitive to me. You are being helpful to me. You're not being insensitive to me, but that I, I understand that you were having the pull. And so that what you, it's the prime example. It was an excellent example of how the Enneagram came into play because without knowing that 
you very much could have gotten yourself into a place of being really upset that I was an ass. Yeah. And well, it's like, I, have to, I always tell Lacey is it's not personal, it's personality. Mm-hmm. And like, it's not personal, it's personality. And like learning their personality in ways that maybe they can't tell you and, you know, mm-hmm. with their own words, but learning those things and doing the work. It's really yeah. helpful when it comes to conflict resolution because you're like, okay, they're not trying to do this. This is just what they're doing. And right. it just changes a lot of those conversations. There's a lot of people in the comments referencing the five love languages. And I think that five love languages is amazing. Also, um, it kind of describes how <laughs> we feel love and how we love others. But the cool thing about Enneagram is it explains so much more than that. Like what mm-hmm. our true drivers are in life, not just in our, you know, in in love, right? Yeah, so, core so. motivations, core fears. Somebody mentioned they want to take the test again because they've changed so much, but your core motivations and your core fears should not change. So your personality type shouldn't change. And that's why I like struggle with it. It's like, it's almost like it's not a personality test. It's like your baseline test. And then you're still going to grow in a million different directions in your life. And you're going to shift how you do things. But at the base of who you are, when you experience extreme joy and extreme pain this is about where you're going to find yourself like processing those things um at the very basic right so think let me when you were you were in a, like a like like I like I said when I was really really sick what was my main response is that I don't I'm insignificant and I do not matter that is hallmark for behavior like even though I have all these other like three type characteristics, which are, are wing things that we can talk about uh, another time. Um, you, if you could think of a time when you were in your best place and what was driving you, or you were in your worst place and what you were struggling with, that is, is going to help you determine those things too. And, and one of the things I was talking about Christina with Christina earlier is that if you're struggling to narrow down all those types, sometimes it's those tests that we answer the questions in the way we would aspire to be rather than in an authentic, this is how I actually act kind of way. Mm -hmm. And I know that that's part of why I was misdiagnosing myself as a three in the beginning, because I was trained to achieve and do big things and and like be respected. Right. But that's not who I am. So So it's your wing. So it was easy for you to like slide into that. Totally. Um, at, at, at need be. Yeah. There's a lot of people that, okay. So there's a couple different things going on here, especially in the chat. So there's people saying, okay, my percentages, my what's that? So I have answers for most of them. Okay. <laughs> so there's, so the test that we had given everybody to take, didn't just give a blaringly obvious, you know, obvious number on the screen when the test was over, what it did was rank certain numbers by the percentage and so if somebody is is hovering, they've got maybe their top three numbers that they could be. How would you tell them how to narrow it to figure out which one? And second to that, somebody in the chat said, well, I'm an eight and a two. You that the, actually that makes sense. So, so can you speak to those the, these types yeah. of scenarios, how they can. So figure. the Enneagram is a circle, so you're going to be a little bit of all of them. They are, nobody is like just one and none of the others. Look at Anna's screen. So I'm a nine and is it, I, I can't remember which way, I wish the arrows were on this, but. Nine so, goes to three in integration. Okay. So that's in health. And then, okay. So, which makes sense because, so I'm a nine, I'm a kind of do nothing, can't stick to anything, middle of the road kind of person. But when I'm doing really, really well, I go into the best parts of a three. If you can see where the nine connects to a three, which is high achieving, um, high ability and, you know, go get it and I can do anything I want and high success, which makes sense like in Cincy journey for somebody who's very passive and can't make up her mind and serial hobbyist. When I'm doing well, I can achieve and I can do really well, good things. But in um, when I'm doing bad, I go down to the worst parts of a six. So the things that sixes do at their bottom at their bottom of the barrel behavior like if they're not doing well that's what I can tend to act like um when I'm not doing well and so the person that was put it, what, put it back up again Anna. Two, put it back up real quick so the person that says they're an eight and a two 
Well, that makes sense because eight and two are connected. So you are one of those. But when you took your test, you're, and I can't remember which way that goes. Is it five bad and two good? I think, oh yeah. Okay. When you're an eight, you go to a two when you're healthy, like the best parts of a two, the very loving, nurturing, um, very like, uh, what is it? Uh, like a hospitable and mothering. Taking care uh, of other people. Yeah. And so, but in badness, you go to the five, which is super analytical, super critical, super like, like robotic, like t- torn down, sure. very internal. Mm-hmm. So when you took your test, when it says you're an eight and a two, it means you're probably one or the other, but or either healthy or bad. Cause a two, when they're not doing well, they're an eight, right? Mm-hmm. Or a two when they're well, the, one of one no, the when the two, they're eight, when they're, if you're an eight, you go to two in health in if health, you're two, you go to eight in, in bad. Progress. Oh okay. yeah. It's so, totally a good cop, bad yeah. cop. So when they're connected, that's a usually good way to figure out which one you are. Um, and like Anna was t- saying earlier when we were just chatting with each other is that a lot of times too, we answer the questions on who we wish we were. Um, and so trying to be super honest with yourself and not projecting what you wish or what you assume that you would do in certain situations, but really at your core, what do you do in those situations is difficult to do. But sometimes if you retake the test from the frame of mind, not not well when I'm really, really awesome. And you know, when I'm not going through all this stuff I'm going through right now, this is how I would do it. No, right now, how you are right now, how would you react? Would you have the patience for whatever that situation is? Would you, you know, and so that kind of helps reframe how you take the test. So like eight and two, those lines are connected. So that makes sense. A lot of times when someone says I'm very much nine and one, well, if you see the circle is connected, um, whatever numbers are to the right and the left of your number, those are your wings, which means that a lot of times they kind of buff your personality. So a lot of times I actually am my entire life growing up. I was a nine one. Like I wanted my parents to see me as good, right? Everyone needed to think I was just like top of the moral food chain. Like I could do no wrong. Like I would never, I never wanted to disappoint anyone. I never wanted to get in trouble. Like I had to be straight and narrow at all times. And so I was very nine wing one, but when I'm not doing great and I am really like, I don't care what you think of me right now. I just need to like, whatever. I'm very nine, eight. And I will just say what's on my mind and I will pick up the pieces later. And I will like steamroll and gaslight and like go like really a bad, I don't do well when I'm in my eight. And sometimes you can tell and you're like, okay, we need to like, I don't know who you are right now. I'm like, it's the eight. It's my wing eight (laughs) mixed with a little bit of my six because I'm like panicking right now. Okay. (laughs) But it's good that you say this because it is, it's reinforcing that we have characteristics from each number. Yeah. So at any point I'm five different numbers and they're all connected on that. And so it it does make sense that your test would give you percentages of each. But you will have one- this that, is why it was so easy to mask into a three for so many years is because mm-hmm. I have a three wing. Now, when I'm not in a good place, I do go to that five like Christina does. And I turn inward and I become a hermit crab and I disappear off the face of the earth. And I just, you know, do other things. I do. I do like all these. I, I go down rabbit. Well, when you're in your five, I mean, you're rabbit. Like, okay, okay, fine. My personality is not all that important. I'll just be status quo. I'll just do what I need to do. Yep. Like, it's fine. Yep. Like, why do I need to be special? That's stupid. Let's just be this. Like, it's just, like, just, just tear it all down. Who cares anymore? Yep. yep. <laughs> and then also, because we were talking about those arrows, when I'm doing really well, really well I'm, I make crazy checklists and I'm very organized and I have all mm-hmm. these incredible plans and it's wonderful. And when I'm not doing well, I'm a stage five clinger. And I know it and I'm sorry. Yeah. (laughs) One of my, one of my teammates, Lacey Hoseman, which a lot of you know, is textbook four also. And learning that about her helped me lead her better because I was constantly like, Lacey, what is wrong with you? Like, why can you not just see what is in front of you? Like, why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? Why can you not see what is true? Like, why can't you see the truth about who you are and what you do to the people around you and how much you are loved and the way a room's energy shifts when you walk into it? 
But like, we love sadness. It feels so good. <laughs> I don't know how you love sadness so much when you are the personification of sunshine. Like, I don't don't understand. Like, it's it's because they are the sun that everything else like rotates around that they want to burn themselves out. So people will like stop looking at them. But the second that we stop, they're like, wait, but look at that. I'm so important. Look how I'm being. So, so. Somebody said in the chat, okay, so what if my percentages were tied for two numbers? The answer is you have to read about both of those numbers. Read the core fears, the core motivations, and the one that you just most do not want to be is probably you. Because it it will make you feel exposed and gross. And And like learning my Enneagram felt gross. I was like, that's not fair that anyone's allowed to tell me that they know that about me me because I've never told anyone or like I felt so exposed and I was like ew like absolutely not I do not want anyone to know that part of me but it was like I didn't even I wasn't letting myself deal with that part of me and it was what was causing so many problems um not being able to voice why I was reacting in certain ways and so the one that you hate the most between the two like you're talking about leading your leading Lacey differently like it's changed my the way that I interact with my mom because knowing that she's a two I'm going to always make sure that she knows how thankful I am for the Mm -hmm. the things that she does for me because she she should never feel taken advantage of because that's like the biggest like ooh yeah as long as she's feeling loved and feeling like you know I'm grateful for her everything is great it's so easy on my team especially what helps me when I know what my leaders are so for Lacey I will make sure that she feels seen and that she has a role that is extremely unique and usually that she's doing by herself. She's not sharing it with someone else because she's not going to share the spotlight. She's not going to be able to like group project with somebody who doesn't get her. So I will give her like a really creative, like identity project, something that brings her best to the table. And she feels like she contributed in that way. And we all will have to say that's amazing. Um, But then my twos, I will make sure they have Um, opportunities to serve our team in ways that they will also receive. Thank you so much. I see what you're doing. We couldn't do this without you. Like we are so grateful for the fact that you're willing to show up an hour early to help set up. You brought all the food or you organ, like you did all of these things to make sure everyone was having a great time. They were just a really good cruise director. Right. And then my ones, I'm terrible at planning things. So I'll be like, Hey, this is my idea, but this is what needs to get done for that to happen. And I'm going to drop the ball. Can you help me make those plans? Can you make the reservations? Can you put together like a schedule for the event and just giving them opportunities to step into that like core motivator for them because they will do their best when you are using their core motivation to motivate them and to bring them into that community. Yeah. And your so. threes, you're going to be recognizing the crap out of them. Oh yeah. I, and, and, this, and I'm terrible at recognizing my threes yeah. and my threes will make sure that I know how terrible I am doing at recognizing <laughs> them. I had a girl, she earned the trip and she said, um, I know you won't shout me out, but I'm going to give you warning. I'm about to earn this trip. So if you'd like to shout me out, you can, but please don't do it the day I earn it. Please give me about three days because I'm not going to tell anyone I've earned it until I've gotten a lot more PRV out of them. <laughs> like she was like, because if I tell I them I've earned it, that's what stops the orders. So she's like, right now, while I've got their attention, I do not want them to know I've earned this trip. And like, she is the threeest three ever. I have never had to do a thing to teach her. She just stepped in and said, this is what I'm doing. Get out of my way. And she just went to the top. She earned for two. She's top 50. Like she's going to do it. And I did nothing to help her do that. The only thing I did was not recognize her enough. And she used that as fuel to just go. And it is hilarious to me because I know that about her. And so us learning each other has helped um, patch our relationship a lot because I've never tried to hurt her. It's just not in my wheelhouse to like catch all of those times where she needed someone to say, you're kind of the best thing ever. Like, and you're doing so good. And, and I think that part of that is her wing four too, that needs me to see that she's doing this all her on her own, that she's doing it her own way. And she's not copying anybody. And like, she is just such a go-getter and I'm so grateful for her, but like she needs that recognition and I'm so bad at that recognition. I'm really good at the like 
personal, like I see you as a person recognition, but not the your numbers, numbers, numbers kind of recognition. And so she wants the numbers, 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 high achieving recognition. And so a few of my threes, they know that about me. So they'll send me screenshots of their stuff going, Hey, I know you miss this sometimes. I just wanted to make sure you saw it. And I'm like, I'm so grateful that you do that because I do want to cheer you on. And I am so proud of you, but you just know that my personality type is like, I'm a thousand different directions and I'm never where I'm supposed to be. And so I'm just so grateful that you're helping me with this. So, <laughs> so. a question that came in is, and I think there's a very simple answer to it. Do Enneagram numbers correlate to all <laughs> at all to zodiac signs like are most nines under sagittarius and most threes under cancer no no i don't think so nothing to do with the zodiac no. and i'm the least I, I mean, zodiac I, of anyone who's ever zodiac i've never ever i'm i'm the least capricorn capricorn there's ever been like i don't understand how capricorns function everyone tries like oh look at all these things that say capricorn I'm like that's not, that's not me at all like, I'm so sorry to burst your bubble, but I am not a Capricorn in any possible way aside from my birthday. So, but yeah, but I'm not, <laughs> my Enneagram doesn't match it at all <laughs> either. Okay. And then the biggest question that is in the chat that I want to make sure to address so that we don't send anybody away feeling like they still don't know what to do. The biggest question in the chat is the test said, I'm a six, a one, a seven, a three, and a nine or whatever. Yeah. Basically it's telling me it's five numbers. How do I even narrow it down? Can you just answer that? Because that is the number one question in there is I'm what five numbers. That? Yeah. Especially that first yellow book, the road back to this you one? is like the Enneagram this Bible. Is the, this is the Enneagram Bible period. Like there's a reason this was gifted to me at a retreat. Cause it is just that good. And the funny thing is my, my uh, bookmark is still in there and it's my plane ticket home. How fun is that? Oh, I love that. And it, kind of cute, right? And if you don't mind language and you want to laugh, this book is really funny. Like I, I really like one. it. It's, it's really an easy read because it's so straight to the point. She talks yeah. to you like, but this one covers so much more because, you know, you've got your numbers and then there are wings and then there are the arrows and then there's self-preservation and there's social, there's, there's just other things that go with it for, for a deeper understanding of why you do what you do. And it's really fun to take with you to therapy because a lot of therapists are just like, you know what, the more you know about yourself, the, the better. I'm not going to tell you not to do it. So yeah. And yeah. let me do this for a second. I'm going to remove, I need to remove the spotlight, remove spotlight. Okay. We're back to main screen. Um, Hi everybody. Good to see you. Um, let me show you really quickly too. You probably have come across or seen at some point on social media when people post things like this, where it tells, it's kind of like a really pretty depiction of, you know, Enneagram type one. And wait, let me get back there. Come on. Um, you know, where it just gives you kind of a cliff notes version today on, you know, they're the ones are the intentional friend and the, um, you know, in growth, they're open, enthusiastic, optimistic in stress. They're sensitive, depressed, envious. Um, they're the idealist, the principled one. And then, you know, then you go to the next graphic. Here's the twos. So they're the dream friend. Their core desire is to be loved and appreciated. Um, their core fear is being rejected or unworthy. They're the giver. Uh, and then on and on and on. You can see graphics like this. Gosh, I mean, uh, you don't even, if if you're like, okay, I'm not going to buy a book. I'm not bought in yet. You can go to on Instagram to like Enneagram Ashton's account or yes. you just search Enneagram on Instagram. And it'll take you to accounts that are filled with graphics like these that make it very easy for you to flip through the different numbers and see which ones of those maybe resonate. And one graphic isn't going to be the end all be all that describes your number. It may take a culmination of a few of them, you know, a few graphics of threes that you're like, okay, I've narrowed it down. I really think that I'm a three, um, but you're going to read through them. And remember, you're going to, you're going to relate to probably at least one thing on each of these, each, each of these graphics for each of these numbers, because we do have parts of 
all of these in us, but you're going to end up, the more you look at it and the more that you start to get comfortable knowing what the numbers are. And sometimes it helps when you start learning the people around you, what numbers they are, because then you're like, okay, well, I know she's an eight and I know I am not an eight. So that helps you kind of narrow it, you know, narrow away from where you know that you probably, you know, you probably aren't. Um, but looking at things like this, and again, Instagram is a really great place to type in Enneagram and get flooded with things like this that will give you a really pretty picture on learning more about the numbers um, to at least help you narrow down where to kind of to to put your focus. Would you would you guys not agree? For sure. No, totally. Okay. So now we are at the, we're at the top of the hour. So I completely understand if you need to go, go. Um, I want to leave just a couple minutes for anybody that wants to ask anything else that maybe didn't get addressed or, um, you know, just free discussion. I may even, I'm going to even stop the recording. We're going to go off of, off of recording so that this is not part of it.